Hi, my name is Brett, and this is a peaceful respite show and tell of Kamiko, a little indie game from a Japanese developer named Fly High Works and Skipmore, who they also did a 3DS puzzler called Ferune. This game is top down, little puzzle action game, kind of almost like the first Zelda game on NES, but a bit faster and with some, some major differences. You first pick your character, and you progress through the same game seemingly so far with each character, and they each have different battle styles and combat abilities. I've played a bit with Yamato, I've played a bit with Izumi, and I haven't played any with Hinomi, so I thought I'd start with her and just show off the game from the start. There's a little bit of a light story, as you can tell by the graphic style, it's really, I think, well-made pixel art has a nice color palette and is enjoyable to look at, and nice, nice music. Gates connecting? Should have space there. Uh, it's worth noting too, there's, I've just noticed a few typos, little things like that here and there. But it is a $5 game on the eShop, so I don't really have the highest expectations for it. And the story's super light anyways, so that's not even a big deal, but... Just something worth noting. The basic gameplay loop of the game is you are in a stage. There are four almost like Shinto gates you have to go to, which you then activate. And once you activate all four in a stage, you then can proceed to the boss fight. Yeah, you can release the seal on the gate between the worlds. And then you fight the boss fight, once you beat the boss, you go to the next stage. There seems to be a pretty good speedrunning aspect to this game, which I'll show why that in a few seconds. So, the basic controls are you move around, there are little switches like that which open gates, like I just opened that gate. You attack, this character has a disc, which is pretty cool, and a sword. Okay, so I can throw the disc, and then attack with the sword, which is cool, I haven't used this character at all, so this is new. Those little blue things you see flying away from enemies is SP, and that is my blue bar, 200 at the top. You spend SP to open treasure chests and also to activate those shrine gates like I mentioned. And as you attack enemies, you'll see my combo meter building up. The higher your combo meter, the more SP you get from defeating enemies. So it's a nice way to encourage you to build your combo up so that you have more SP. And with your SP, you can also use a special attack. And that uses SP, so ideally I think it is, you build up your combo, you're getting more and more SP, then you can use your special attacks and also open treasure chests and gates. And I'm gonna ye oh. So to use the special attack, you hold down the regular attack button until it goes in, and yeah, it's pretty strong. You get decent SP from it too. Uh, there's also a run button, so you can run really fast, which I appreciate. I really hate when you walk slowly in games. I've played this level twice already, so I know what I need to do to complete it. Gotta push that block to that switch, hit this switch. It's kind of a two-switch puzzle, and then open this up. Something about the game that I haven't been loving is you get items right from treasure chests. Now, if I were to attack, I would drop the item, and if I were to get hit by an enemy, I would drop the item. So you kind of pick up an item, and you're running as quickly as you can, you can't sprint when you're holding it, to try to deliver that item to a certain place. So that orb I just delivered goes to this orb sconce, or uh, statue, or whatever the orb needs to go into. And I need two of them to progress. And a lot of it is, you'll get the item and then you're running and you're trying to dodge the kind of simplistic enemy AI. And I don't like that mechanic at all, it's not very fun, but it just doesn't, it's not very interesting design. So here's one of those shrines I activated. In the four, in the center, you see all four that have been activated, which once those are all activated, I'll be able to go fight the boss. And that's what the basic gameplay loop is. You do some combat, you're building up combo and attacking enemies to get SP, and then you're spending SP for special attacks and also to open those gates and treasure chests. Every time you go to those gates, you get a save point, so you can save the game there too, which is convenient if you die and you're getting the hang of things. 
I'm gonna head on over this way. I like the enemy design. I like I like those orbs or the blobs with the with the eye and the wings. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, so I know I need to go over here. I'm actually gonna use this special attack. Mm. Should have been a little closer, but that's okay. Also worth noting too that the red diamonds in the upper part of the upper left area of the screen, those are my health. So I'll get you can upgrade your health in your SP bar, and I have four health right now. And you get more health by destroying pots and also cutting grass with your weapon. I'll show off the other characters too, the other two, as their attacks are a little different, but it still feels pretty similar. One character has a bow and arrow, and they have this combo attack where it shoots one arrow, two arrow, three arrow. And the other enemy, or the other player character, has a sword and has a pretty cool sword combo. I think it's interesting each of them have the same campaign. I'm not sure if there's benefits to playing through with different characters or what. I'm still pretty early in the game. I've only played two stages with one character and then this stage twice. So here we go. That's a hell of a, there, that's an SP upgrade. So now I can hold more SP, which just makes things a little easier in the long run. And then I also know down here I have another orb, so I gotta deliver that to the sconce. And this is that part of the game I was talking about where I have to like dodge enemies. I, I can defeat them, but I'm not sure if they'll respawn, so that's been quite a learning experience. Okay, so they didn't respond, so I guess I could have cleared the path first off, but I find it easier to just kind of hustle my way through. There we go. So now that gate will open, but there might have been an area I didn't explore to where I just was, so I'm going to go back just to double check. If I actually pause the game, you can turn time display on. And this is what makes me think that there is a potential, maybe the developers intended or want there to be speed runs of the game, because you can turn on the timer and you can actually see how quickly you're progressing through the game. And since you can run so fast, it makes me, yeah, feels like I could, I could totally see it being like, oh yeah, how fast can you go through the stages, which is pretty cool. Here's another treasure chest and here's a key. Now to use this key, I need to go to this door up here. Open this door and make my way to a shrine that's over here. I'm not loving this disc character. I noticed there's a disc icon next to my health bar and status bar. I wonder if the, the disc changes or if that's just letting me know what the weapon is. I like the music. I think it's really fun music. So there we go. Oh, so I, this is a case where I didn't have enough SP to activate the shrine. So now I'll have to combo and attack some enemies to get some SP back. There we go, I think it needed, what, 24? Sorry, 30. So now I can activate that shrine. There's just one left. I'm actually gonna turn off the timer because I don't really need that. Because I'm not racing. I'm taking my time. Oop. I don't know if those are frogs. No, those aren't frogs. We'll see frogs in the future. They're almost like little armadillos or hedgehogs. I think the pixel art's really cute. I like, like I was saying, I like all the enemies. They're pretty unique in the way they look. These mushrooms are pretty cool. The different color mushrooms mean they have different health. So nice, nice design to signify which ones you need to attack more and which ones you can just move on from. The pixel art style reminds me of Hyper Light Drifter, if you've ever played that game. Very similar aesthetic. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it's not, it's not too much. It's not like it's aping it and like, it doesn't feel like it's stealing its thing, but just a visual similar, like, similarity that I noticed, which I, I like, I like that style. Nice colors, vibrant color. Cool, so I reached this and now what I'm actually gonna do is I happen to have a save point with another character just at this point so that I can show them off too. So 
Since the game saved, I'm going to return to the title. Go to play again. You see this question mark. I don't know what that is, so that'll be interesting to learn. You're going to have three save slots. And then... So I was just playing as Hinomi. Now, Uzumi, who is my bow character, that's the bow character, I think I'm at basically the same spot uh, where I'm moving on towards the boss fight. So I can pick this up. Some extra SP, which is nice. And then this, just another another life item. And we'll move on to the first boss fight. So the game is this interesting mix of you're trying to go quick, there's some combat. The combat's not super heavy. I don't think it's as polished as like A Link to the Past or uh, games of that vein, but it does, it is fun. And there's also a decent mix of puzzles. So this boss right here, I'm trying to get it to land on these squares. And when it lands on the squares, if I can get it to land on all four squares, it will actually activate. Ah, having a tough time doing it. It'll actually activate. It'll make that enemy uh, lose all of the kind of core of it to pop out, and then I can attack it. So we'll see if I can get it to trigger. Oh, I think I may be able to get it. There we go. So now a bunch of things pop out of the middle, and I'll just want to attack one of them, the core. And rinse and repeat. It gets a little difficult, more difficult each wave. This bullet hell aspect right now is kind of lame, because I can just go in the corner and <laughs> ignore it. But it is what it is. Ah, so every time it hits me, I lose health, and now I have one health. But I, I don't know, maybe I'll be able to win. I gotta believe. I'm not sure if there's a way for me to get extra health by shooting these mushrooms or anything. Nah, it doesn't seem like it. So yeah, the bullet hell waves get a little more difficult, but still I can just stand here and ignore them. Oh, cool. Okay, so I'm just going to try to think three hits will do it, and... Yeah, I think that did it. So that's the first boss. First time around, I died, and I think just because I've done it before, that made it a little seem a little easier, but... Interesting challenge at first, once you get the hang of it. It'd be really neat to see if speedrunners get in this game just because of how quick the action moves. So this is the second stage, and I'm actually going to find the first shrine here and save and switch to the third character just so you get a sense of what all three characters are like. This bow character is pretty cool. I like the range, and as you can see, one hit, two hits, and then three for the combo. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I find it's so much easier to build the combos with uh, this bow character than that disc character. I was just thinking the disc was kind of strange. I, maybe I just hadn't gotten the hang of it yet. There's those pots, and there we go, some health pickups, which is nice. We'll save at the shrine. And then we'll kind of do just another, another little quick fast forward by hopping to the title. Going and pick the first lady, whose name is Yamato. So Yamato just has a sword, has a nice three hit combo too, where uh, these frogs are they, my, the bane of my existence. So one, two, uh, one, two, three, kind of nice, moves you forward a little. Oh, also that bow character is super smooth. Sorry I didn't show that. It has, basically what happens is you you charge it and you hold it, and then a bunch of arrows fly out and kill all the enemies on the screen, which I think looks cool. And I'll show this Yamato special attack. It's a little spinning move where your speed increases, which is pretty sweet. 
Now I need to remember where I was in this. Oh yeah, I was here. Uh, I recently picked up an orb and needed to deliver that orb. Now these frogs shoot out bubbles, and the bubbles are surprisingly uh, challenging to defeat. Yeah, I like this game. It's fun. It's simple. I really like how simple it is. And these frogs... I hate the frogs, but I like everything about the game. I don't love that kind of getting the... Picking up the item and running with it mechanic. I think that's pretty weak. But everything else about the game is really sweet. I like I like the pixel art, I like the music, I like how simple it is, and I think for five bucks on the on the Switch, which doesn't have too many lower priced games, I don't think you can go wrong with it. If you like this kind of aesthetic and what you've seen so far. I'm curious to see what future stages look like. There's also been some menu options about mentioning secrets and unlocking secrets. So I don't know what the deal is. I'm not sure exactly what beating the game with different characters will do or anything. So I'm looking forward to learning more about that. It plays really well on TV mode and portable mode too. The pixel art looks nice both on the Switch's 720p screen and a 1080 screen, which is always a good thing to make note of. I really love how fast it is. I don't know, maybe I'm just impatient, but I love, I love that there's a run button, and I love how quick the combat is. All right, let's move on to that second boss. here and then go here mm, oh yeah that seems right cool so we'll move on to the next boss something i didn't find in that stage was any health or sp upgrades so maybe i missed some things Here's the ones before the bosses. Which, hey, I'll take any help I can get. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. If I get my butt kicked and can't beat it, I'll probably uh, leave that for you to figure out if you play the game. But who knows, maybe it'll go, maybe it'll go well. Oh, wow. Okay, interesting. So it looks like I'll have the ability to teleport if I need to. What do, you, what do we think I do? Should I attack the the circle with the... Yep. That's it. Oh. Huh. It's kind of pathfinding algorithm got more smart. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. Yikes. Oop, that was it. Okay. So, seems like each boss fight probably has a different little puzzle to it, and the two you've seen so far show that it's it's pretty simple. But I, I don't know if there's, that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't mind the simpleness. Scorching Labyrinth. Cool. Okay, well let's find the first shrine, and I'll save, and we'll call that a show and tell. key there. Oh, I can fight those. 
been neat seeing how each stage has different aesthetic, different enemies, even different music. I can really appreciate that. Hmm. Now that's the kind of design and pixel art that makes it look like Hyper Light Drifter. Which I've seen other people say online too, so... Who knows what the deal is. There we go. Open that up. Oh, those little fire bugs. They're kind of cute. There we go, another SP cube. Oh, wow. Huh. Oh, that's a cool enemy. Oh, wow. I am gonna try. Oh, that actually worked. Halfway decently. It's all over there, down here. Oh, no. Triggered it again. Should have learned. I remember down there, there was a switch with a treasure chest, but I don't know how I would open that. So, so there's a shrine over there. Little battle rooms are nuts. There we go. Oh, there's two. Get some health. Oh. It's going too fast. Wow, this, this stage has gotten a bit more complex than the other one. So, I don't know if it's just me, but the game is kind of chugging a little, kind of dropping some frames, which is interesting. I don't know if that's intentional or... I'm not sure exactly why, but I'm noticing that a little bit. Uh, where does this thing to go? Do we think... Okay, well, I dropped it. I'll just make a run for it. Yeah, cool. I won't show any more of the stage because I think... I think it'd be fun to see it for yourself if you ever play the game. And that is Kamiko. Thank you for watching and checking this game out with me. I like it so far. I think it's a pretty neat little retro throwback with modern take. I like a lot of it, like I said. I think some of it is kind of eh, but for five bucks, yeah, can't go wrong. Thanks for watching.